Hello and welcome to another episode of Exploring Standards. I am Jess and I am the host. And today I am here with Robert Clements, CEO of Ascent Risk Management. How are you, Rob? Yeah, very well, Jess. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. So today we're here talking about um, ISO 27001 uh, and 2022. So that's the update. So we have actually already done a, pod, uh, a quick podcast on this um, when it came out in October 2022. Uh, but we want to go into a bit more detail today um, before we kind of looked very briefly at the differences in the and what people should expect um, with the with a new standard coming out, um, or the updated standard, I should say, sorry. But now we want to go a bit more, a bit more into detail. Um, so my first kind of question is going to be then what has changed? What should be what what are people seeing from this update? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, what we knew when we last spoke um was that there would be a change to a new standard. Um, because ISO 27002, which is the controls in the standard, and mm-hmm. um, that had already changed at that point. So it was in the February. Um, and when we last spoke in, in October, I think the 27,001 had just been updated as well. Um, yeah. so, um, so that was great at the time. But since what we now know um, is a lot more about how UCAS and the certification bodies are going to approach the transition. So mm-hmm. um, obviously with a new standard being released, um, the previous version, so ISO 27,001, 2013 um mm-hmm. that no longer is current um so everyone needs to move um their certifications to the new version um and obviously there's a process to that and it takes a little bit of time um so if we talk about what's changed um the biggest change is in the control set so 27001 has an annex annex a uh, and that's got lots of controls in there that you can use to treat your various um security risks information security risks um has been revised the, the changes aren't hugely different but they've been updated really for um for the world as it is today um it includes a lot more around cloud services and cloud infrastructure um and also the the name of the controls are slightly different they include privacy and cyber security now as well so it's a much broader um field um so that's where the big changes are um in the what you might call the framework itself, the clauses four to 10 of the standard, um, that's only had very minor changes and that was more to bring it into line with other standards like uh, ISO 9001 mm-hmm. and uh, ISO 14001 um, and those, although it already aligned um, pretty well uh, as time's gone on and they've evolved, um, the 27001 2022 has just um, been updated to reflect. Okay, brilliant. So there's been obviously a few minor changes. So what are people expecting then to, or what should people be doing to implement and transition to the updated version? Or how can you prepare for the for the implementation or transition? Um, yeah, well, I think the first thing that you should do is um, if you've got a consultant like um, Ascent um, Risk Management, then you should talk to them because they'll be prepared and ready um, they'll be talking to the certification bodies and they'll also be seeing how other customers um, are dealing with this. So that's a real benefit of using a consultant. Um, but you don't have to. You don't have to use a consultant. You can um, mm-hmm. make the changes on your own. Um, I think the first thing to do is get a copy of the standard. And I would recommend getting a copy of um, ISO 27001 2022 and also um, the supporting standard ISO 27002 2022 um in at the end of that standard there's a mapping annex so it shows you the old control against the new control okay um, really helpful um if you um, have the time to um, map everything across and update your um uh your policies and procedures and, and whatever needs doing um obviously you should always look at the risk assessment um and keep that up to date um looking at your objectives and that kind of thing um and uh, so that's the first step is find out what's changed um, try and map mm-hmm. across what you've got already um, apply any updates or create any new um, procedures or policies that you need to to meet the standard in line with your risks um, and then really before you go ahead to um, the certification transition i think um, an internal audit is always worth doing because um, that really helps to identify any weaknesses in the system uh, and uh, and those internal auditors should be impartial, should be 
um, separate from what they're auditing. Um, okay. so that gives you a good opportunity to um, to just have a fresh look at what the stand is asking for and what you've applied and uh, and get someone to um, to assess that. Cool. Okay, so we see that we talked about a lot um, of how we can help and what, what we can do. But what is that timeline? What are we looking at um, in the transition? How long is that going to take? What's the period to transition over? Yeah, I think it's always really difficult to talk about timelines for clients because it depends what else they've got going on in their business, if they've got any other projects, uh, how many people are working on it. Um, but I think uh, generally from the people I've spoken to in the industry, um, other consultants and people from the certification bodies, um, I think we all agree that it's a fairly um, um, straightforward update. There's no major changes. Everything's just been updated a little bit to to align with what people are doing anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's a big change. Um, but in terms of the certification process, there is some deadlines there. Um, obviously, in the UK, most of the certification bodies are governed by UCAS, which is the accreditation body. Mm -hmm. um, and they've set out a timeline. So from, um, uh, from the end of April, um, they will be ready to assess uh, certification bodies themselves because obviously the the auditors that certify they need to be competent uh, and know what they're doing and, and have the right processes in place so that's about to start now so April 2023 um, and um, all of the UCAS um, certification bodies need to have completed that process by October by the end of October 2023 um, so that's what's happening now. So the certification bodies are getting ready to um, to be accredited for this. At the end of October this year, so that's the deadline for the certification bodies to um, to complete the transition for themselves. Yeah. Um, but also at that point, any new certificates they issue, that must be against the new version of the standard. So ISO 27001, 2022. Um, and as consultants, what we're saying to, to our inquiries and our clients now is really, there's no point implementing the old one. You should really implement the new standard and get it yeah. for, for that date. Um, so, um, so if you're a, a new client and putting this in for the first time, um, slightly easier. Um, obviously, it takes a little bit of time to um, build the system and put that in place. But in terms of the certification, the um, the certification body will be certifying you to the new version. Okay. Um, if you've already got certification, obviously then we need to go through a transition process with your existing certification body. Yeah. Um, so firstly, that depends on when they're accredited. So that's any time between the end of April and the end of October. So somewhere in that timeline, they'll be ready. Um, there is a process where certification bodies, they can issue you a certificate before that. But it would just be not UCAS accredited. There would be no UCAS okay. model. Um, and what they would tend to do is when they achieve the UCAS accreditation, they would reissue the certificate for you, um, you know, providing that they've met all the requirements that they need to. Would that require another audit? Or could that just would it just be in that they could instantly change it over? Um, well, this is quite an interesting one. This certification bodies are dealing with it slightly differently, but okay. essentially the the principle is that um, the certification body would need to audit the new controls and the new system. So they need to be able to show that they've um, checked that you're compliant. Um, some of the certification bodies um, are doing a, um, a, a pre-audit or a checklist or a readiness yeah. review, whatever you want to call it. So they're adding that on at the start. I think the UCAS guidance is that it would just be one additional day of auditing Okay. Um, or something along those lines. But how you fit that in, whether that's a separate audit to transition or whether you have that as part of your surveillance audit or your recertification, um, it depends on the certification body you're working with. So um, if uh, you, the best thing to do is ask about their process. And Ascent, as you know, just we deal with lots of different certification bodies um, yeah. and see how they deal with it differently. So you can always come to us for help and advice on that as well. Brilliant. So my final question going in is, um, how can Ascent, how can we uh, support the transition? Yeah, we're, we're here to help with anything um, that you might need, whether that's just dealing with a certification body and understanding that process, um, or whether it's 
uh, a whole um, support package to help you transition to the new version of the standard. Um, so there's a number of ways we can approach that. Um, we have uh, a gap analysis exercise, so where we look at what you've got already and what the new standard wants, and we identify what those gaps are. Um, that's quite good because at the end of that process, you'll have a, a gap analysis report, and the report will list a number of items to um, to work on, basically. So it becomes a bit of a to-do list. Um, so that works really well. Um, going on from there, um, obviously, we have some um, experience of what's required to meet the new standard, so we can um, help you draft policies or um, check that certain processes are up to date. So we can help in a consultancy capacity um, mm -hmm. to do that. Um, if you've done a lot of the work yourself and you feel that you're ready um, to certify to the new standard, uh, what we would tend to recommend there is an internal audit. So as I mentioned before, um, the internal audit is a really good process to check and test your system before the certification body comes in. Um, and we can provide that service and, and being an external party, we're completely impartial, we're not auditing our own work. So it, it actually works really well to bring us in to do that. Um, and then obviously any findings from that audit, we can help you to, um, to fix or advise on, on how to correct them. Um, so it's that process there. And then I guess we've got some other um, useful tools. We've got some online training through our Lurators brand. Um, yep. I think there's still, at the moment, there's still a free um, course on there. So you could take that to get an idea of, um, of what's new, and what the requirements are. Um, and we can come up with other solutions like in-house training to uh, for your staff. So it's produce some awareness training, that kind of stuff. Um, really, any anything related to ISO and international standards, um, we've normally got a solution for it. So just um, just contact us. We'll be so always ask. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. Um, I really feel like this has given a lot more clarity to the situation. Uh, what we will do is in the show notes, I will pop links into um, our gap analysis, um, also to the documents, the ISO 27001-2022 and the ISO 27002-2022 for people if they want to purchase them as well. Um, so thank you very much for having a chat with me to Rob, today, Rob, um, and hope you have a lovely rest of the day. Yeah, thanks, Jess. It's been good to talk. Hope you have a good day.